You may be noticing something a bit off going on around YouTube right now, a problem that is only getting bigger every day and getting more sophisticated, more difficult to stop, the longer it remains unresolved. Yes, I am talking about the current epidemic of spam flooding the YouTube comment section. If you've read the comments of any popular video that has been recently uploaded, then you've definitely come across these in some way, shape, or form. Finally, it's here. Thanks for your support. I have a surprise for you. Really any form of enticing language accompanied by strange text and a shortened URL. The account typically impersonates a well-known YouTube channel, boasting the same name and profile picture. Now this is a common scam that is frankly as old as time, and I didn't give much thought to discussing it until an incident occurred quite recently. A good friend of mine runs a tech YouTube channel called Damn It Jeff, where he has made many videos in the past about gaming consoles such as the PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. He noticed that he was getting these kinds of comments almost immediately after uploading. You've been selected as a winner. Thanks for watching. Text me on Telegram. When he blocked them, more would just show up. And then he started getting emails and direct messages from viewers sending their payment and shipping information asking where their prize was. Okay, Nation Squid asked me to like show you exactly what I deal with every day, so check this out. Uh, this is my channel over here, and this is what I have to deal with like literally every single day. Every single day. Comment, comment, buck comment, buck comment, buck comment, buck comment. Every single it's like they literally never stopped. And every once in a while, they actually end up changing names so it doesn't show that it's me anymore, it's just some random other channels that's like super popular. So it's like, in this case, it's... Fam Lauren, I guess? <laughs> but every day it changes. Every, every day it does change. But it doesn't stop there. These bots have evolved from impersonating notable creators to now impersonating everyday people. The types of comments that you would never even suspect. They don't contain links, calls to action, or any visible incentive to attract users. And the longer they stay around, the more convincing they become, and the more they continue to fool people. Some of them are even full-on conversations, but it's all fake. Why? Where is this strange infestation of botted channels coming from? What exact purpose does it serve, and what can be done to combat it? And most importantly, what is YouTube doing to stop it? It seems like almost anyone can be at risk of an attack by these YouTube bots, so be sure to watch your guard, Dio. <laughs> well, would you look at that, Guardio just so happens to be today's sponsor. Now we've all seen just exactly what happens when you aren't careful online. You can get hacked, have your files destroyed, identity stolen, yuck. But Guardio is a browser extension for Chrome and Microsoft Edge that protects you in real time. It prevents attacks from malware, fake crypto sites, phishing scams, tech support scams, and more. What's even greater is that it scans for all these things before you even access or download anything online, ensuring that your online presence is secure. One time there was a hot single in my area and well, I'm a pretty classy guy, so one thing led to another. But for some reason she sent me a link to a crypto site and asked for my credit card information. Anyway, I'm still waiting for Amanda to call me back, but yes, Guardio thankfully blocked the crypto site. But Guardio also offers an identity monitoring feature on mobile devices as well. Anyone who signs up through mobile will get real-time alerts if their data is ever breached or leaked. And if you go to guard.io slash nation squid, you can try Guardio Premium seven days for free and also get a free security scan to detect existing threats on your device. It also comes with 20% off the monthly subscription and it can protect four additional family members. Go ahead and check out Guardio. It takes only 30 seconds to install. That way you aren't sorry -o. <laughs> Amanda, call me. Now the presence of these botted YouTube channels has gotten more prevalent in recent time, but the practice itself has been going on much longer than you might think. How far back? Well, pretty much since YouTube itself started. So how did it all begin? Well, some of the earliest notable accounts of YouTube spam date back to 2009, with the advent of Malspam. At this time, a new innovative feature was implemented into the site the YouTube annotation, unfortunately now a part of internet antiquity. 
Annotations allowed creators to essentially put little speech bubbles in their videos. This could include little notes about the video, corrections, and of course, advertising and linking to websites. While intended for linking to sites affiliated with the YouTube channel in question, a versatile feature like this would of course get abused. There were instances of creators using them, along with a description, not to promote their products, but to promote shady links such as get-rich-quick websites or fake lotteries. Creators at the time likely did this in exchange for money or to garner views and subscribers for their channels as fast as possible, which, as we've discussed before, was a common practice on YouTube in 2009. But these developers soon figured out that there were much easier and much more effective ways of spreading their message in the YouTube comments section. Rather than getting some creator to do it, they could just create a YouTube account and do it themselves. These comments were more or less just keyword stuffing, a collection of random explicit words accompanied by a link to an adult website. This was done so that these comments would gain an advantage in the Google search algorithm. If someone is, well, having a lonely Saturday night and they search for these types of terms, these YouTube videos will show up in the search where they can find the comment and click the link. The adult website often appeared legit, but would soon start to direct you to other things, such as installing a fake copy of Adobe Flash Player in order to view the content, or asking for your credit card information. Combating spam like this sounds pretty straightforward enough. Implement a feature which detects any links or words commonly associated with spam, and then put them through a filter. This erases virtually everything. But what about the spam that doesn't use certain words or links to gain recognition, but instead uses pure social engineering? The ones which encourage you to spread the word on their behalf, or something bad will happen, maybe through the use of superstition or just plain old internet humor. Or maybe the ones that you aren't even aware are spam at all. Hey, wanna be friends? In the beginning of 2020, tens of thousands of YouTube channels reported getting this exact comment from a user named Logan and a handful of others the very second the video was uploaded, with even some people claiming they got the comment when the video was still unlisted. How all these bots are created is probably self-explanatory, likely through a Python script of some sort. But notice how this comment doesn't contain any links, keyword stuffing, or strange language of any kind. It's just a simple, wholesome comment. Someone wants to be your friend. What is even the point of creating something like this? How is this causing any harm? Well, even just these three simple words can cause significant damage for its target. And how it does that is frankly, very genius. It doesn't use link dumping or SEO exploitation to attract people. Instead, it's just charming. The uploader reading that will think, oh yeah, I would love to be this person's friend. I will check their channel out. And if you actually go and click on these channels, you'll see that they're very barren. They have over 100,000 subscribers, but only one video. And that one video is a tutorial on how they gained 100,000 subscribers by doing nothing. Most people stop at around this point and notice what's up. But since these comments are scripted to post on as many videos as possible the minute they are uploaded, it doesn't really matter. The mere exposure is enough. If these comments were to be posted on 1 million YouTube videos and only 0.5% of people fall for it, that is still 5,000 people now under this bot's spell. By doing this, the bots could get all these views on their channels and gain a following quite effortlessly. Soon after, multiple reports came out that if you subscribed to these users or even responded to their comments, they could hack into your YouTube channel, also turning you into a bot, like an internet zombie apocalypse. However, there was never any evidence that this actually happened. Given that neither subscribing or commenting involves giving out your login credentials, this seems unlikely. But chances are, you probably thought these rumors were true, so you continued viewing these channels to learn more, and therefore increase their traffic, giving them exactly what they want. But even through just a short amount of time, the continuous advancement of technology has made these types of comments become even more sophisticated. They have gotten so convincing, you may not even notice it anymore. How many of the people you have befriended or interacted with in the comment section 
are even real. Another friend of mine named Zach runs a YouTube channel called Real Estate License Wizard, which is all about mastering the real estate exam. Zach noticed something quite disturbing in his comments. As many as 30 comments were popping up all at once from dozens of different accounts exhibiting very normal conversations, likely created through some AI neural engine. Except these comments will always refer to someone's name or the name of a company, talking about how they helped them with a problem they were having. These bots will also artificially raise the upvote count so that they appear at the top of the video. Again, no links are necessary. The whole point is to use charm and realism to get people to look up this information themselves and get scammed from there. While these fake accounts will use pictures of real people and fake names to look convincing, they also can be real people. In fact, they may not even be aware of it. The most common way hackers obtain login credentials is by creating fake phishing emails and sending them to the target. An example of a phishing email would be a fake email from YouTube saying your account has been hacked and that you need to reset your password. The email will look very convincing and like it is from YouTube, and when you type in your old password for quote unquote verification, the hacker now has it. And if you don't have two-factor authentication set up, your account is now compromised, and they can use it however they please. They may not need to create a fake account, they could just use a real one, and in some cases, the victim may have no idea it's even happening. Others will not advertise anything at all. They will just copy already existing real comments from the same video and make a duplicate. That way there is no distinguishing from real or fake. And the whole point is to get readers to read that comment, be charmed enough by it to click on the channel, and visit their about page, where a link may present itself. But even then, the more obvious spots are also still managing to get through. Those who did not have posting links disabled in their comment section are met with comments posting links to adult websites, again, the very second the video was uploaded. But what gets even more concerning is when these comments start to come from the people you know, or at least the ones you think that you know. You'll see a YouTube bot with the exact same profile picture as another big YouTuber, maybe even the same name. Some of these may even use a checkmark emoji or some kind of symbol to mimic the verification checkmark icon that is next to these big channels. Again, if the YouTube channel does not have links disabled, the link will be pasted right into the comment. If links are disabled, it will instead say something like, click my channel to claim your prize, where the link can be found on their about page, or DM me on Telegram, with the Telegram address being in place of the username. The links are typically fake paywalls or cryptocurrency scams. What's even more difficult is that these accounts often have dozens of duplicates. If the creator blocks one, another their account that's identical will just pop up moments later. It's a game of whack-a-mole. At first glance, these comments probably look very obviously fake, but that doesn't matter. People still fall for them, especially young children and the elderly. But it's not only affecting the users, but to a lesser extent, the creators as well. On top of getting direct messages from viewers who have just been scammed, unknowing viewers might see this from a superficial glance and assume that the actual creator is the one scamming people, which could be very damaging to their reputation. A lot of them, including myself, have even been accused of buying bot comments in order to gain an advantage in the YouTube algorithm. Now I can assure you this is not the case and it doesn't work like that. The YouTube algorithm is so much more complicated than that, but that is a subject for another video. But what gets even worse is when the botted comment is not impersonating a verified channel, but when it actually is one. Similar to the wannabe friends comments, these comments will come from channels with over 100,000 subscribers and in fact have a real verification check mark. These comments will actually typically be extremely supportive to the content creator, telling them they make great videos and to keep up the good work. This works by establishing a sense of ethos. The reader thinks, oh wow, another famous YouTuber likes the same channel I do, I'm going to check them out and then they are presented with the exact same trap as the wannabe friends bots. 
These malware developers typically buy real channels that were already verified and then turn them into bots. And that is how they are in fact verified, as YouTube's verification process is very rigorous and they want to make sure that the creator and their content is legitimate before giving out that check mark. But after that, quite frankly, it doesn't really matter anymore. At the end of the day, all these bots are able to be effective due to their relatability, their comforting nature, and their ability to cater to the needs of everyday people. They are relatable in that they are literally copying the comments of real people, comforting in that they can impersonate notable YouTubers and establish a false sense of community and warmth for the reader, and catering in that they appeal to those handful of people actually looking to get free crypto or to win a prize. The question now is, what can we do to combat all this? We can first start with the little things that do ultimately go a long way. Creators can increase the strictness level on their comment filters. They can block words which are commonly associated with botted content. They can disable links from being posted on their channels. Viewers can report these comments to keep the community safer. And most importantly, they can take note of all the warning signs we have discussed to make sure that they are not victims themselves. This is a growing problem that now lots of big channels are now paying attention to. YouTube creator Marcus Brownlee has made an excellent video covering the situation and how it has affected him. He makes note of a third-party program that has thankfully been created called YouTube Spammer Purge, created by Theo Joe. This program will scan all the comments on a given YouTube video and tell you what percentage of them are bots. Now I realize that no program like this is going to be 100% accurate every time, but even if this program only got half of these right, that is still a very large number. Sites like Reddit seem to be much cleaner than YouTube. You typically never see links being spammed, and the comments have much more real and in-depth discussion threads than, frankly, any YouTube comment section. But how? Why don't sites like Reddit have a spam problem like YouTube does? Well, because of one thing, moderation. With the YouTube comment section, a user uploads a video and the comments just run wild. YouTube users can report comments, but the only one who can truly delete them is the uploader of the video. But many YouTube creators may not even look at their comment section at all, so a lot of that spam goes unnoticed. Forum sites such as Reddit have communities that are often run by dozens and dozens of moderators, whose sole purpose is to make sure malicious and botted comments are removed as much as possible. These posts are being looked at by real eyeballs, rather than some AI system. Thankfully, YouTube does have a feature where you can essentially have your channel function a bit like a subreddit, and you can elect other users to be moderators on your channel, where they would be allowed to filter out unwanted comments. But things like subreddits are often run by big groups of people, whereas a YouTube channel is typically only one person and is much more centralized. So that also brings in questions of trust and just how efficient these YouTube moderators might be. It is a system that could be improved, but it's a start. Something I want to briefly note. If you see any comments like this that look like they're coming from me, it's not from me. If I were to ever do a giveaway of any kind, I would never ask you for money, I would also talk about the giveaway in the video, and any comments actually from me will always be pinned at the top. If you don't see my name appearing exactly like this, and if you don't see that verification check mark next to it, it's not from me, and don't interact with it. If your gut is saying no, then listen to it. <laughs> now that we've talked about what the community can do to combat it, what is YouTube doing? A lot of criticism and public scrutiny is actually being sent YouTube's way right now, as many feel that they frankly aren't doing anything. Especially now with what we've seen, combating bot spam is getting more difficult every day the longer we wait. But these are my ideas of some features that I would like to see implemented into YouTube to combat spam. Firstly, creators should have the option to also block comments that have the same profile picture as them. As you probably know, Google's reverse image search technology is actually very intelligent and can detect similar images right away. And as we all know, Google owns YouTube, so I think they can use this technology to create a feature like this. 
Google's reverse image search can also detect inappropriate images. So why not use that exact same technology for filtering out inappropriate profile pictures in the comments section, as many of these bots promoting the adult websites will have adult images as well. Creators should also be allowed to block users with certain words in their usernames, such as Telegram or DM me, or even block symbols that are typically used to deceive people. Now, will you have false positives from legitimate accounts that just so happen to get trapped in these filters? Yes, you will. But the ends justify the means, and you can always have these comments be placed in an approval-only filter, where they can always be viewed manually later and be approved by the creator. The thing is that YouTube's algorithm is already not fooled by botted comments, as a number of YouTube comments is only a fraction of what pushes a video to be recommended to the public. YouTube's algorithm is arguably one of the most complex, secure, and well put together systems on the internet. If YouTube just put the same amount of care and thought into its comment section as it did in its algorithm, you wouldn't be watching this video right now. But fortunately, it looks like YouTube may finally be making some changes that could help long term with the new introduction of handles. YouTube handles behave much like Twitter handles. All YouTube creators will have an at username that only they can use and no one else. If someone sees an impersonation account that does not have the same handle as the real creator, this may be enough to save many people from being scammed. But as we've noted with the old substituting an L for an I trick, and the fact that there will be those handful of people who still fall for it anyway, the solution is not perfect, but it is definitely a step in the right direction. Of course, bots will never go away completely, and will always find a way to creep up in some way. But it frankly seems like YouTube may not be doing what it could, with the resources it already has at its disposal, to bring this down to as close to zero as humanly possible. It currently is an epidemic on the platform, and I really do believe that the methods I've suggested will make a big difference, whether it's short term or long. It's time to bring the you back to YouTube. There is a fable from Aesop called the North Wind and the Sun. The wind and the sun have an argument about which one of them is stronger. To settle this argument, they have a competition to see which one of them can get a man's coat off as he's passing by. The wind blows with all its might at the man, but no matter how hard it blows its cold, bitter current, the man just holds on to his coat tighter and tighter. The sun, on the other hand, just continues shining like it always does, and as it continues shining its pleasant warmth on the traveler, the traveler just takes the coat off himself. Persuasion and compassion always wins over aggression and forcefulness, and the longer we wait, the more convincing these bots will become, as they are finally learning that being charming and appealing is much more effective than any form of link spamming could ever be. I would like to speak with YouTube in the same way. This video is not meant to be an attack of the platform. YouTube is arguably one of the most important and greatest inventions ever made. Instead, I want to speak to YouTube like an old friend and tell YouTube that it's not too late to do better. I want this video to help them and to give them my ideas for how I think we can become a stronger and warmer community than we've ever been before. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you never miss a future video.